Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. I wanted to show you six really interesting websites, online resources for teachers and professors, part two. If you missed the first one, then there's a link up there. Just click on that and you can see some of my favorite websites. And now I wanna show you six more websites. So let's just jump right in. This first one is called Google Jamboard and this is free. You just need a Google account and you can create these boards, these online boards that you can use to interact with students or even colleagues. I've used this, the one that I have here as an example is one that we did with colleagues. It was a social event that we did for an online activity. And it's really interesting because you can have various boards, people can claim the boards, or they can collaborate and work together on boards. And you can put whatever content you want on here. And so I can mark this up with a pen tool. I can change the different pen sizes and colors. And of course I can erase that. I can move things around if I want to. Uh, resize it. I can add little sticky notes, different colors, and I can also upload images, which you see on the screen right here. I can put shapes and text, and I even have a laser pointer so that if you're doing this virtually and you want to take turns presenting, then people can have laser pointers where they outline areas, and the laser doesn't stay for very long, but at least you can emphasize certain parts of it. And so it's a really good show and tell platform. I've done it for scavenger hunts at work. I've had students um, curate content and present it. It's a very informal and a very fun platform. And what's interesting is that you can export all of the images here. So if I click on the kebab icon, I can rename it, I can download it as a PDF, I can save it as an image or make a copy. I can even see version histories. And it's all free. This is just a Google product that not too many people know about, um, but it's called Jamboard. The second resource I want to share with you is a website called cleanpng.com. And a PNG is a different kind of image than something like a JPEG in that you can have transparent backgrounds. And so what this is, is it looks for art that has transparent backgrounds. And that can be interesting if you have a PowerPoint presentation or even a Word document that you want to create into a PDF and you have some kind of color, some kind of background imagery, then you can search for these PNGs that allow you to put that on top of it without it being too weird. And so if I browse through some of the categories here, I can see watercolor patterns that I could put on there. There's also things like frames if you want to somehow frame your content. I'm gonna search for arrow. Suppose I want to find a good clean arrow and if I find one that I like, I can go ahead and click on that and then you can download it for free. So now if I'm working in PowerPoint, for example, I have this arrow and I can just move it around. I don't have to worry about any transparency and I can shape that and it floats right on top of that colorful background. This next one's a true lifesaver. It's really hard to email files that are larger than 25 megabytes, but especially if you're working with any kind of video or a lot of images, then you might have some large files that you need to send. So that's where WeTransfer comes in. You don't need an account, but you can sign up for a free account. And if you pay for a premium account, they'll give you much more storage. But as it is, I can send two gigabytes for free. And so all I do is drop my folders, my files that I want onto here. And you can see that those are well over 25 megabytes. And then you just determine who are you gonna send this to? Who is it from? Do you wanna include a message with it? And again, it's really good to sign up for a free account, but you don't really need to. Just fill in the information. You are gonna to have to put your email so that they'll verify that this is the right person who is sending these files. But if you're in a pinch and you need to send a large file to one of your students or one of your colleagues, then check out wetransfer.com. Now let's hop back over to this PowerPoint. Suppose I want to share this with one of my students or my colleagues. I can go ahead and click the share button and generate a link, but you're gonna notice that that link is quite alphanumeric. It'll look something like this, just a lot of gibberish. And it's true that the person will probably just click on it or copy and paste it into their browser, but it just looks really cluttered, especially if you're sending it in a message. And that's where this website Bitly comes in play. Bitly will take a long URL and it'll condense it into just a few characters, something that's a little bit more manageable. Now, like a lot of online resources, Bitly is free, but there's also a paid account and it gives you more features. I just use the free account. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create a link with the URL that I just created. So I'll go ahead and copy that in there and create it. Now it does use a random alphanumeric back half, but I can customize that as well. I can even put a title if I'm sharing lots of links, then I can categorize them and go ahead and click save. And the interesting thing about a platform like Bitly is that I can shorten a lot of URLs and I also have some analytics. And so I can see how many people have clicked on various links. 
There's one link that I created a year ago and it looks like it has about 1800 clicks on it. Must be a good page. So perhaps bit.ly slash canvas page design is a good resource that a lot of people are going to. Maybe I'll put a link in the description below. For my next awesome resource, I actually want to give a shout out to my friends at TechSmith. TechSmith, they make different software platforms for screencasting and recording audio and video. And their blog at techsmith.com slash blog is actually a really good resource if you're getting into instructional video or even if you know a little bit about instructional video but you want to sharpen your skills. You want to learn some of the industry expert tips and tricks. They have different series such as capturing and creating and they have resources and guides so I can learn about shifting to online teaching for example. Their guides and webinars and online courses are great and they just have a lot of wisdom to share. And so it's worth checking out what do they have to say. Now, not everything is in the context of education, K-12 or higher education. Some of it's corporate, but there's still a lot of good content. And I feel like the principles of creating a video, whether it's for YouTube or for your class, I think there's a lot for us to learn and share. So give TechSmith a visit. My last resource, if you haven't heard of Unsplash.com, then you're missing out, but you're just about to discover a treasure trove on the internet. Now, if you're looking for good high quality imagery, you can always go to Google and see what kind of images they have in the creative content, but it's not really curated. It's just everything's out there on the internet. Unsplash does a great job of looking for high quality, high resolution photos that you can use in your classes, and they're all accessible for free. You don't have to pay for a subscription or you don't have to pay per image that you want to use. This is all stock, but it's very highly curated and it's just really good quality content. And so suppose I'm looking to design a class and I want some images of books and you see all kinds of creative things. And if I find one that I like, then I can click on that. It'll tell me a lot of the details. How many times has this been downloaded? Who's the photographer who captured this? I can get similar photos and you can even sign in and you can create your own collections. And so again, after browsing, maybe I like this one, I can go ahead and click download and it'll let me know. Feel free to give a shout out to this person on social media. Let them know that you're using their art, their photography, and then you can upload that right into your Canvas course or you can upload it into a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation, even your blog or website. You're going to find all kinds of just beautiful images and it's even a rabbit hole. You might spend a little bit more time than you had budgeted yourself if you're just discovering Unsplash. And so these are six online resources that I have in my quiver, my quiver of arrows. So if you like these, feel free to bookmark them. If you have other resources that you can't live without, that they're just integral in your teaching strategy, then please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to check it out and I'd love to share it in a future video. I should also mention that a great website to visit is howtocanvas.com where you're gonna find write-ups on this video and many others. And if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, then doing so is a visceral experience. And until next time, Happy Digi Nanonin!